Divine Truth Theme Discussions Discussions between Jesus and Mary about specific topics and issues. This is Session 2, Part 1 of the discussion God's Laws of Forgiveness and Repentance, where Jesus and Mary continue discussing the operation of God's principles and laws of forgiveness and repentance, focusing more on God's truth about the personal emotional processes relating to forgiving and repenting. The session was recorded on 5th of September 2017 from 12.20 p.m. in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. Well, welcome back everyone to our ongoing series on forgiveness and repentance. Mm. I'm here again today with Jesus. G'day everyone, how are you? <laughs> And this is session two of a long series of discussions that we'll be having with you on the topic of God's principles and laws pertaining to forgiveness and repentance. Mm. Now, this whole series had kind of came about, as I introduced last week to our listeners, mm -hmm. uh, in response to an email that we received from a listener. Well, it's, I suppose really it's a number of emails we received from a number of listeners over the last year, isn't it really? But, it but the last email was more direct, so we thought yes. we'd better start the whole process off. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. right. And we actually, as it's evolved, we've decided that it's more a series on forgiveness and repentance because there's so much that we need to introduce mm. before we can properly answer those questions. And now there's a number of letters that we're going to respond to at the end of this series. So yes, yes. the way it's going to pan out is probably we'll have five or six or seven sessions, just you and I having a discussion mm. and then we'll get and on maybe to maybe even the, more, we and, might. Because yeah, <laughs> the way it turns out it? is that we start at a new outline and then we go, well, we have to break that into two because it's too much. <laughs> There's a lot we want to yeah. say. Yeah. yeah. But as, as I mentioned in, in our first session, so this is session two, but in our first session, we spoke a little bit, didn't we, about why this is so pertinent, these, these topics, because if we look around us, if we look inside of us, there's a lot of personal pain and suffering. There's a lot of societal pain and suffering. Mm. There's a lot of familial pain and suffering mm. and really global pain and suffering. And these principles of forgiveness and repentance really if everyone was to engage with them on a personal level all of that pain and suffering would be alleviated yes on the repentance side obviously it's pain that we cause others and ourselves through mm -hmm. the actions that, or the sins that mm -hmm. we engage and then on the forgiveness side it's the pain that others have caused us through the sins that i've engaged yeah. but you can see that either way the pain and suffering is as we talked about in the assistance groups is the result of sin yeah but the problem is how to cure it or correct it yeah and um, because if we don't cure it or correct it then we've got no way of alleviating the individual pain or the collective pain that exists on the planet. So obviously repentance and forgiveness are going to become the major methods, the most important things that we need to learn about in the long run if we're going to be able to mitigate pain and suffering on the planet and also be able to alleviate our own personal pain and suffering. Because mm. in fact it is forgiveness and repentance are the, the only ways to actually completely eradicate pain and suffering aren't they they're the, right. they're the only things that will actually causally rid us of those things yes. and and as i was saying earlier um the fact that there is so much pain and suffering on the planet and inside of us is good evidence to show how resistive basically we are to these principles that we're discussing definitely mm -hmm. and and uh, and most discussions revolving around these two principles of forgiveness and repentance usually are fraught with a lot of uh, rage and anger on the part of the listener <laughs> and uh, it's very very difficult in many cases to get across the importance of these things and human race at this stage does have many very firmly entrenched and established internal beliefs emotionally that cause the majority of the human race to not engage either repentance or forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, these are things that we are very resistive to. Humanity is very resistive to for, for a lot of injured reasons and also because of the lack of trust in God and God's laws. Mm -hmm. And this is why we need to talk about these specific laws and principles of God because they're very, very important for our future. Yeah. Yeah, so 
In summary, for the whole series, our aim is to really discuss the truth about God's laws and principles pertaining to forgiveness and repentance. Mm. Then we'll be looking at how we can personally engage with those principles, how God is always assisting us to engage with those principles, and then what it's like for us when we have forgiven or have repented or we have been forgiven. Mm. And our listeners' questions, I d help to highlight some of those um, misconceptions that yes. people have currently on earth about forgiveness and repentance yes. and what that process is about. So it'll be good to put them at the end because that'll help us really round out the final parts of the discussion. Yes, and we also will be learning in later sessions about things like conscience and how that works and, mm -hmm. and how that in, impacts upon our engagement of these particular principles. and and also the law of compensation and what's going on with the law of compensation. So there's quite a lot of things besides even talking about God's you know, feelings and emotions about when we engage forgiveness and repentance. Yeah. And there's a lot of different aspects to the, to the conversation we're going to have. So we're really just let's, at the beginning. <laughs> yes, we are, we are. All right. So let's have a quick review of what we looked at in our first session about forgiveness and repentance. Sure. So our suggestion to the viewer is if you haven't already watched the previous session, session one, that you stop now and go and watch that because basically everything that we cover in this session is building upon that previous session. Yes. Yeah. But briefly for those who have watched and maybe just want a little bit of revision, <laughs> in the first session we talked about God's laws in general. Mm. We talked about... And how God's laws govern the processes of forgiveness and repentance, just like they govern everything else. But in particular, we even talked about the laws themselves, didn't we, and why the laws needed to exist and all of those kind of very basic fundamental principles as well. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And we talked about God's truth and how we could learn God's truth about any matter, mm -hmm. which is important because yeah. we're basically saying now this is God's truth about forgiveness and repentance. Yes, and if we made that claim, uh, the reason why we discuss that is if we made that claim that it was God's truth and we need to substantiate that claim somehow by proving, <laughs> proving it. And so we had to come up with the reasons why we say quite definitely that these are God's truths about this particular, these particular qualities. That's right. Yeah. And then we started to talk about what is God's truth specifically about forgiveness and repentance. Yes, which is a, obviously a conversation we're going to continue today, isn't it? Because yeah. we didn't get to have enough time to talk about everything last time. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So in this session, we're going to talk more about God's truth about those things. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to focus on, we'll begin our focus on the personal aspect of forgiveness and repentance. So what it's going to look like for me if I want to forgive and repent, what things in the universe are working to bring me towards forgiveness and repentance. And it's really from my perspective, what's it all about and what's it going to involve, yeah. which I think most people will be interested in. Um, well, at some will... point, it's going to be their perspective <laughs> sooner or later. <laughs> That's the thing with God's laws is it enforces perspective <laughs> to be God's in the end. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 So yeah. it's all, all we're always about bringing ourselves into harmony with God's perspective. So we have to come from where we are to get into that perspective, aren't yes. we? And yeah. Engaging forgiveness and repentance is a major way we come into harmony with God's way of loving, isn't it? It is. Yeah. It is. And in fact, uh, you know, obviously, if humanity had no sin, then forgiveness and repentance would be unnecessary. Mm -hmm. But the because we created sin, humanity created sin, now we've also created the necessity of forgiveness and repentance. Mm. But interestingly enough, God knew that there was a potential of humanity creating sin, so God already created the laws mm. to allow for forgiveness of sin and repentance about sin. So that's wonderful too, that God had the, obviously the foresight to, because of his omniscience, mm -hmm. had the foresight to see that actually there would be a need for the laws regarding forgiveness and repentance to exist because humanity would at some point potentially engage sin through the choices they make. Yeah, mm. yeah. Okay, let's get on with it. All right. So we're going to speak about God's truth, about the correct process of both forgiveness and repentance. And as we're going to see, as we've alluded to in our previous discussion, and as we're going to see, when we really think about everything that 
actually needs to be forgiven by us and everything that we're going to have to repent for is it's quite a lot, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, can, it can seem fairly overwhelming. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and I think initially people hear it and they go, oh, well, I've got really nothing to be repentant for and nothing to forgive other people for. Oh, my life's pretty good or whatever. But once you start drilling down into God's perspective of it mm -hmm. rather than our own perspective, then you see quite a different picture, actually. Mm. And the reality is the majority of us will have hundreds and potentially thousands of things to repent for or forgive in the course of our, you know, slow growth uh, and slow release of these particular emotions. So, yeah, it's, it's a lot of work. But we usually only see that work once we start seeing God's perspective. Mm. It, before then, we usually have our own perspective, which is very limited and also very, um, I suppose you could say dark or not very enlightened in its conception mm -hmm. and in terms of how God would view things. God's viewpoint of sin is much more refined than humans' viewpoint of sin at this point. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so in this next section on God's truth about the process, we're going to give some reminders about what we covered last time, mm -hmm. just as a precursor to what needs to be forgiven and what needs to be repented. Yeah. And then, then we're going to talk about what I call the mechanics <laughs> of true forgiveness and repentance. What actually has to go on? What's coming in? What's going out? What happens? Yeah, what uh, happens in a, the soul? In the, it? Yeah, it is. What's yeah. the mechanics? What's going, occurring inside of the actual soul of the bit of the person? Mm. Mm. Yeah, when they're engaging with these principles and laws, mm. and we'll talk about how God's laws are actually driving a lot of the processes that we have to engage. Yes, and then we'll look at how that actually applies to the emotional process that we're going through. Yes, those real tough emotions that everyone seems to be really struggling with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. So let's just look quickly at our reminders about forgiveness and repentance. Sure. So to look at our reminders about forgiveness, yep. firstly, yep. when is it that we have something to forgive? Well, this is where we introduce this concept of sin mm -hmm. from God's perspective and that somebody had to have sinned against us specifically or their sin somehow affected us specifically in order for us to have something to forgive so and by sin we're saying that they had a thought a word or an action or an intention or a desire even whether and it didn't have to be necessarily intentional it could be just mistaken even mm -hmm. but but something where they acted unlovingly and that lack of love on their part caused uh, a certain flow of uh, of events to occur to us which then had an emotional impact upon us mm -hmm. and now we've got something that we need to forgive them for if we're going to truly move forward in our life and and then we also discussed the concept that the forgiveness was actually a forgetfulness emotionally of that emotional pain and suffering that was caused yeah so in other words by the time we've ended the forgiveness process we will no longer feel any emotional pain and suffering, even though we will still remember the event mm -hmm. uh, or be able to recall the event intellectually or with our mind. From an emotional perspective, from the soul's mind's perspective, uh, we basically cannot remember what it felt like yeah. to be hurt in the way that we were at the time. Mm. And, and that hurt has now completely disappeared and now we're free of it and it's no longer governing our lives. Mm. So we almost gave the bookend, didn't we, at the beginning? Yeah. Something's happened that's out of harmony with love. And remember, we said it's important to recognise that there's something happened out of harmony with God's laws yes. in order for there to be Because all God's something. laws are loving. Yes, so. so out of harmony with love. And Often we think, oh, I've got to forgive something, but actually nothing happened that was out of harmony with God's law. So, no, it's not true. Yes. And the, the good example of that is truth, isn't it? When yes. somebody tells us the truth, we get all offended or whatever <laughs> and think they've sinned against us somehow when they actually haven't from God's perspective. Yeah. Telling the truth is actually in harmony with God's laws. 
depending upon the intention of the individual. So if their intention is to hurt you with the truth, yes. well, that would be different. But if their intention was to just help you become more enlightened, yeah. <laughs> then of course their intention is completely in harmony with God's laws. Yeah. Mm. So in order for there to be something to forgive, someone has to have had an intention, word, thought or action, uh, emotion towards us that's out of harmony with love, therefore out of harmony with God's laws. Mm -hmm. Then there's something to forgive. Mm -hmm. So we establish that. And then we establish at the end of it all, once you've gone through this process we're going to talk about later in our discussion today, mm -hmm. we've forgotten. There's no emotional signature left inside of us. Yes. We, we remember the event, but not we don't have the emotion attached to it anymore. There's no, no. heat on it is what I call it. Yeah, and there's no emotional animosity anymore towards yeah. the person who perpetrated it. Or um, withdrawal or, or sadness or anything. Well, I would like call that. all of those things emotional animosity. Right. Where okay. you're either angry or you're resentful or hateful or every sad every time you see them mm -hmm. or feel, you know, upset every time you see them or you feel like you want to avoid them or any of those kind of feelings don't really exist for you anymore. Gotcha. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So that's our reminders about forgiveness so yes. far. Yes. So let's look at our reminders about repentance. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Which is almost the opposite to what we've said about forgiveness in some ways, isn't it? Yes, it's a, it's now about what we've done to others, isn't it? So, so this is where we have had a thought, word, action, or an intention or desire, whether it was purposeful or un so-called unintentional. Yeah. An example of some unintentional ones might be, you know, that we just had an addiction and we acted upon it. And we didn't really realize it was loving at the time, mm -hmm. but from God's perspective, it's still unloving. So mm -hmm. it's still a sin. And therefore, uh, whether it was intentional or not intentional, we've engaged it. And therefore we've harmed another person. And, and it might not just be other people we've harmed. We can harm ourselves as well, of course, so we can purposefully take an action mm -hmm. that is out of harmony with God's laws with harm ourselves. And we can purposely take an action that's out of harmony with God's laws or engage behavior out of harmony with God's laws that harm another mm -hmm. or even harm the environment we're living in. So uh, um, and harm our relationship with God. So there's a lot of things that we can do to harm or, or act out of harmony with God's laws. Mm -hmm. And every time we've done that, we've created a sin mm -hmm. and that sin has an emotional signature which exists in our soul and every sin from and it's a sin that can only as as was with, with forgiveness it has to be a sin that from god's definition it's sin not not somebody else's yep. offense of us yes. when we weren't sinning but rather has to be an actual sin and then once we've uh, committed these actual sins now there are specific things going on inside of us emotionally that caused us to do these sins, yep. and also that are the emotional signature that is a result of mm -hmm. these sins. And both the results emotionally and the causes emotionally mm -hmm. must be repented for. Mm -hmm. And once we've repented for them, not only is the result repented for. Yes, so there's no there's no, no emotional, emotional attachment, heat, if you want to call it that, know, yeah. or emotional attachment, or there's no emotional feelings about the result of what you did, like guilt and other things like that, and other kinds of pain and suffering resulting from that. For example, of you know body pains and all these other things that are a result often of these kind of emotions. But also, we've addressed the reason why we chose to engage in the sin mm -hmm. because all, all sin generally is a choice um, and even addictions are choices so so all sin are choices and and if we engage in a choice to sin we need to find out the reason why we've engaged the choice to sin what was the underlying motivation that caused us to take the action we took and we must also release that yeah. if we are truly repentant mm -hmm. or we're going to be truly repentant. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's quite a, you can see repentance if we compare the two, you can see repentance is going to be quite a lot more difficult than forgiveness because repentance involves two sets of emotions. Yes. The first set being the effects of what we did mm -hmm. and the, the second set being the deeper set which was the cause of what we did. Yeah. Uh, whereas forgiveness only really involves us getting rid of one set of emotions, and that is releasing from ourselves the hurt of what other people did. Mm. Yes. So it makes sense, not necessarily uh, 
in the end, uh, the end result may not necessarily be this, but it makes sense that forgiveness should be easier mm. than repentance. But unfortunately, most people find both processes <laughs> very difficult. <laughs> very, very difficult. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. No, it's it's true. Hey, that it, logically you would think, well, forgiveness. <laughs> I only have to feel the hurt that was done to me. Whereas repentance, I have to feel the hurt I did to others and the reason why I chose to hurt the uh, to hurt others. Yes, so which is very difficult usually to arrive at. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you, you have to go through quite a lot generally of emotions before you arrive at the reasons. Mm -hmm. And uh, oftentimes that's because you've chosen to not forgive something in your childhood. Yes. So let's... So repentance often involves the process of firstly releasing emotionally the 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 harm you did to others and then having to forgive a whole heap of things that happened to you because they in fact were the holding on to the, that hurt was the core the wanting to avoid that hurt was the cause of why you harmed another correct yeah. so so it's a two-stage process mm -hmm. so you could say in in a way that repentance is a two-stage process one of which those stages are, are forgiveness yes so it's important for us to learn about both processes if we're really going to understand repentance yeah mm. and that's why we decided to merge the two together didn't we yes we started out in a discussion about forgiveness and then we thought well look you can't talk about one without the other not really they're no. joined really yeah, aren't they? They are. yeah. Yeah, yeah they are all right so god's laws define the correct process of forgiveness and repentance. Mm. We talked about this in session one mm. somewhat, but this is a chance to remind everyone and give a little bit more detail about this. Yes. Um, so soul-based laws govern both forgiveness and repentance. They're not human imagined processes. We don't get to say, I define forgiveness as this and therefore it's done, or I, I've repented because I did this. There's actually scientific laws beyond our control um, and beyond our, like we can't limit them or define them in a certain way. No. There, is a, there, is a soul, there is a time where it's absolutely true that you haven't forgiven and then it's absolutely true that you have and the same goes for repentance. Exactly, and this is a very important point that we must re-emphasize over mm -hmm. and over again. It's not something that we can determine of ourselves whether we've finished mm -hmm. the processes. God's laws determine whether we've finished our processes, and we have no say in it, really, <laughs> aside from the fact that we can, uh, we can <laughs> avoid sin and then we won't have to have the processes. <laughs> but, but once we've engaged sin, we now have no say in having to engage both processes. We because can resist or comply, but basically the rules remain the same. Well, you could say even further than that, we can resist, comply or desire. Yes. You know, there's those three aspects of it, isn't there? We yeah. can resist, engage in forgiveness and repentance. We can comply, but sort of unwillingly. Yeah. <laughs> or we can really desire the process yeah. and actually actively engage the process. So we can do one of those three things. But once sin has been engaged, we are engaged in the process in some way mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. there's no avoidance of that fact yeah mm. yeah yeah all right let's get a bit more specific about it then sure so god's laws determine the correct process of forgiveness now mm -hmm. how do god's laws drive that process of forgiveness well, remember we were talking about this in the first uh, in the first session we had about what the desire of God's laws are, if you like. God has God's principles, God's which are God's desires, mm -hmm. created God's laws, and so God's laws of forgiveness and repentance all have underlying desires that God is expressing through the law, mm -hmm. and the desire of of God's law regarding forgiveness is that we let go emotionally, let go of past hurt and pain mm -hmm. so that we don't carry that past hurt and pain into future events in our lives yeah. and and unfortunately if we refuse the process to do this then of course we are now living in the pain that the past pain that was caused mm -hmm. by in this case someone else we're talking about forgiveness so it's some someone else that caused it but now we're living in this past pain and many of our actions and decisions and, 
the choices that we make in our life are now being governed by this past pain. And even many of our belief systems that we now imbibe or accept are governed by the past pain that mm -hmm. we've received. Now, God doesn't want that to ha ha happen to us because God knows that these are all going to cause further pain and suffering for us. Mm -hmm. So God's laws are there so that, so that there's an action now occurring mm -hmm. as the effect of God's laws showing you that actually if you live in this past hurt and pain rather than releasing it, you are going to create future hurt and pain, not only for yourself, but probably also mm -hmm. for other people around you and for the environment in which you live. And so God's laws, firstly, are there to correct us and to firstly begin to create a desire within us mm -hmm. that we wish to let go of the past hurt so that it doesn't carry forward into the rest of our lives. Mm. And we'll have a whole session discussing exactly how that happens. Exactly. Um, but also there's this aspect, isn't there, just the basic scientific fact that God's laws measure when we've sinned and when we haven't. Exactly. So, and we talk a bit more about, about that later, but, yeah. but the reality is when God's laws, God's laws make these measurements yes. and go, right, this soul needs to go through a process now about this thing I've measured. Yeah. And so now God's laws are acting upon what it's measured to try to correct that particular problem, whatever that problem may be, the hurt that mm -hmm. another has caused. Mm -hmm. And not only that, God's laws motivate us to even have to do this through our own desire and intention. So this is a very important thing that we need to realize. It's not something that God's saying, like God's not forcing you into it, but the laws are encouraging you in this direction through their operation. Yeah. So, so God's not going to say to you, I'm going to punish you for the rest of your life, but rather God's saying, no, if you go through this process, you'll be relieved. And once you're relieved, then what, what the rest of your life is going to be very happy. There's not going to be any negative results from what other people did to you, which is wonderful because if, if we couldn't release what other people have done to mm. us ever, then we'd be governed for the rest of our existence by it. Yeah. And God doesn't want us to be governed by that, obviously. So going back to our question, how God's laws drive this process of forgiveness, basically you've said the laws define when and quantify when something's been done wrong. Mm -hmm. Then they begin to act upon us to encourage intention and desire to, to forgive. Yep. And then they they either continue to operate or change in their operations to alleviate pain according to how we're engaging with the process that God has defined. Correct. So that's how the laws define it. They say uh, the laws operate on you to create further pain and suffering when you don't engage with it. Yeah. When you do, the laws operation, the operation of the law doesn't change, but the, it there operates differently upon your soul. Well, there are rewards. You yes. can say uh, if we refuse to forgive, we refuse to operate in harmony with the laws of forgiveness and repentance, then there'll be further pain and suffering. Mm -hmm. But if we engage the process of forgiveness, then there'll be less pain and suffering. And that applies physically as well as spiritually and emotionally. So, so basically what it's saying is it rewards you when you engage it properly. Mm -hmm. And there's a, penal a penalty if you don't. Mm -hmm. And that sort of encourages you to make the decision to, to engage a process which ultimately is going to bring your own happiness anyway. So we're, we're very silly and illogical if we refuse to engage the process because by refusing we're consigning ourselves to our own future unhappiness mm -hmm. so so the laws are all there just for, for that loving purpose of bringing us to happiness and and that's one of the things we discussed remember in the first session we talked about god's laws being there to create our happiness yes. it's a, you know most people think of law as you know, creating our unhappiness somehow restricting <laughs> us and creating but that's not the purpose of god's laws yeah yeah mm. all right so god's laws also determine the correct process of forgiveness yep can we talk a little more just really in summary of what we talked about last time about how god's laws drive the process of repentance yeah, well, it's very, very similar, isn't it, to how it drives the laws of forgiveness. And, that, and again, it quantifies the wrong. So, yeah. so again, God's laws measure when you have done something that, is a, that God defines as a sin. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and now that is quantified 
emotionally, they're mathematically quantified, it's scientifically quantified. And now certain laws now can act upon that particular thing, that energy that is able to be measured. Yeah. And so whenever you've done uh, committed a sin, it has a certain emotional energy signature, yep. I suppose you could say. And now that that emotional energy signature is there, the law is going to operate upon that emotional mm-hmm. energy signature, trying to correct it, trying to to reverse it yeah. back to a state that's completely free of that particular sin. Yep. Mm. Gotcha. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Of course, once it's quantified, now all these laws now act upon it to make the corrections that are required. And of course, uh, but but as we've discussed with forgiveness, it requires our willingness or our desire, more importantly, to go through it. As we mentioned earlier, we could have the idea that we're going to resist or we have the idea that we accept begrudgingly (laughs) or we have the idea that we're going to desire it. Now, obviously, the laws will operate in each one of those cases too to correct the the resistance. Mm -hmm. And obviously, when we're resistive, there's potential of more pain there. And even a begrudging acceptance is going to be potential of pain from God's perspective because he wants it to be a desire. Well, as we'll (laughs) learn later, we can't actually engage repentance unless it's a desire. Of course. All of God's laws that recover the soul all are based around desire. So so this means uh, that we can't really engage it. Although that's not strictly true when it comes to forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Uh, And for repentance, certainly that's going to be the case. But, But God's laws do put us through a process where you know over time we 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 can begrudgingly cry for example we can begrudgingly let go of an emotion but it's the same operation as if we willingly let it go so -hmm. if you fully if you begrudgingly let go of the full emotion which will take a much longer time than begrudgingly letting go uh, than willingly willingly. the desiring to let go of the emotion well, obviously, it just is a longer time we were out of harmony with mm-hmm. the law. But at the end, if we let it go fully, mm-hmm. whether it was begrudging or not, the process, the is, process complete. is complete. The laws define yes. that it's complete. Exactly. Yeah. The laws will define that it's complete. Now, as we'll talk about later today, um, some things regarding repentance can't be done begrudgingly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, but certainly with, uh, with both actions of repentance and forgiveness, there is a, there are many emotions that we can go through that can be begrudgingly engaged mm. where eventually we end up in a state where we're now free of the sin but obviously that's going to take much much longer yeah so so it's not really correct to say that they all operate upon desire but they all do eventually create within us a desire to release mm. Um, and that is pure. In other yeah. words, the releasing of the emotion is pure, mm-hmm. where we're actually going through the actual thing that will cause the recovery of our soul awesome. through emotionally. And, and that's what God actually does call a desire, where we're actually, you know, grieving, for example, the thing that needs to be grieved, mm-hmm. not some other thing that we imagine. Yeah. 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 Mm. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. I- I'll ask you more about that when we get to those certain sure. sections because yeah. I think there's a lot to discuss there. Of course there but, is, um, yeah. Yep. Let's, let's now move on to this person. We'll get now to the personal focus. How it feels. How it feels, <laughs> what it's all about for me, <laughs> for, for, the, for the individual. Mm. Mm. So this is the personal process of forgiveness and repentance. <clears throat> um, so we'll start again with our looking at the laws, mm-hmm. how that affects me personally, and then we'll move on to what it's going to feel like to forgive and repent and what I'm going to have, the actions I'm going to have to take emotionally yeah. from a soul perspective. Yeah, yeah. and why, why we often have resistance to it as well. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the personal process of forgiveness. Can I say firstly with this that we've called it a personal process of forgiveness because it is very personal. Mm-hmm. There's a, what I notice a lot when we discuss divine truth with people is that there, there is this desire in most people to make rules. You know, they want to have a rule they can go by, some kind of thing that's going to be... Um, a checklist. Yeah, a checklist mean, yeah. they can follow. 
every sin we've committed is very individual generally and as such it requires an individual process of forgiveness or repentance mm -hmm. uh, to to release the sin mm -hmm. so so this is why the process is very very personal it's a very personal process that we're going to engage sorry just to clarify you mean it's unique personally the, the your process of forgiving something and my process of forgiving something even though the laws that govern that process are identical because our individual experience and the way we've held on to hurt or the the, the specific type of hurt is unique then it, are you saying it's then a unique process for us even yes. though we're engaging with a standard set of laws yes yeah. yes and it's a unique process because of the uniqueness of the sin we've engaged mm -hmm. now if it was possible for two people to engage exactly the same same sin in exactly the same manner at exactly the same time exactly the same thing with exactly the same amount of hurt that it has been exactly caused to everybody around them as well yeah. and and to have exactly the same response to the, themselves if that was possible then of course the law would act in exactly the same way Yes. upon those two people and their process of either repenting or forgiving yep. uh, for that around that sin would be identical would be identical but but you can see in practice that every person is quite unique in the way they engage their desire and the way they engage their will the way they engage their life the way they even act upon the sins of the past and the emotional hurt that they have and because of this individual uniqueness that we have as a unique response to all of these things it, it is then a very unique and personal experience that we need to go through. So here we're talking about the process of forgiveness mm -hmm. and it's a personal process. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a personal thing we're going to have to go through. No two people are probably going to go through it the same way, but the law would be the same for each person if their use circumstances were identical. Mm -hmm. The law is the same, but, but of course each person's personal situation is not identical mm -hmm. and therefore it becomes a very unique individual process mm. Mm. and when we talk about the personal process of forgiveness i also think a lot about the fact that it is something very personal for me to do i can't talk to you about it and get to forgiveness i can't you can't share in my emotions enough for me to get to forgiveness it's something i have to personally want to do and do certain things to actually it's, it's we'll not something that. god can do for me and that's partly why i wanted to call this section the personal process because it, it's very much something i mm. engage and we'll talk about how it is personal we as we go through the discussion we will mm. yeah all right so let's talk about the fact that god's laws operate on me to motivate forgiveness mm. Yeah, so initially we generally start with an internal feeling that we don't want to forgive. Mm. Well, if we even go back further, initially something was done, mm -hmm. you know, that was an act was taken that was a sin mm -hmm. by someone else, and that act or sin, or sin the behaviour that they engaged, and it can, by the way, just even be a thought about us that we have absorbed, yes. as well as feelings and so forth. But that particular sin has to have, as we've said, been out of harmony with God's definition of, of love, yeah. which is what makes it a sin. Mm -hmm. But once that sin has been created, there's an emotional signature to it. And that emotional signature, due to different openness that we have, particularly when we're children, that, and, and we remain open usually about the same things we're open as a child, we receive that emotion from that person yep. which then creates certain feelings within side of us that are that are hurtful mm -hmm. and and it might not just be an emotion we've received because there's also usually behavior that they've undertaken yep. you know whether that behavior like in the case of a child might be some behavior like punishing the child for something they didn't do mm -hmm. for example which will create a certain response in the child emotionally and physically they've been beaten physically oftentimes but also there'll be an emotional response to that about unfairness and so forth. And so this emotion now exists within me. Yep. Now God's laws, as soon as that emotion exists in me, God's laws are going, measuring it, bang, 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 there's mm -hmm. emotion <laughs> existing in this person now that needs to be released for their own sake, yep. for their own happiness sake. 
and and it's not just for the other person in fact forgiveness is not for the other person as we will see more and more but it's for your sake you need to forgive if you do not forgive this hurt remains in you and remains constraining and governing the rest of your life while you leave it in you. Mm -hmm. And God's laws don't want that to occur. God's laws want us to let go of that. So God's laws are there trying to firstly encourage us to have a desire, an intention to to actually see what was done and to feel about it and let it go. Yep. And God's laws obviously help us let it go. Mm. Because if, if there was no way of letting it go once it entered, Mm -hmm. then there'd be no way to recover from the sin of other people perpetrated towards us. Mm. So God's laws also encourage that process as well. Is it true to say that, because obviously you explained that process where something enters us and then God's laws are operating to let that go, um, it, given the design of our soul, is it tr isn't it true that really by stop by holding on to it we're already out of harmony with god's laws or yeah, so is that true or is that a free will well, yes choice, this is or how this is work? a sin for which we, we need to be repentant mm, mm, ironically mm. because uh, yeah most people don't understand the way the soul works and so therefore they choose to hold on to emotions rather than experience them and this is a very damaging process for the soul and it's a very damaging process with regard to forgiveness, because every time you hold on to an emotion, you're storing it. Mm. And there are penalties for storing emotions inside of your soul, particularly emotions that are hurtful. Mm -hmm. you know, every time you store a hurtful emotion inside of your soul, which when you think about it, it's quite an illogical thing to do, but mm -hmm. we do it because we don't want to experience it mm -hmm. and we don't want to let it go through the experience. So we choose to hold on to it. Now that we've made the choice to hold on to it, Obviously, there's going to be negative consequences to that. This emotion now begins to govern my belief systems and my experience. Mm. And, and obviously, God's laws want to correct that. Yep. Want to correct the fact that we're making this decision mm -hmm. that's out of harmony with the way in which we've been built. The way we've been built is to experience emotion and release them. Good or bad emotions, what we classify as good or bad, you know, mm -hmm happy or sad emotions or you know whatever classification of emotions we have god's god's intention was that we experience every one of them and the experience of them releases them uh, and if they're happy loving emotions they generate happiness and other forms of f feeling of peace and contentment and if they're unhappy emotions they we feel relieved we feel once they're gone, unburdened yeah. Yeah. from them and yeah. God's intention is to do that now if I refuse to feel my emotions now obviously there's going to be penalties associated with that that we can blame no one else for but ourselves mm. because and the penalties will be what I now carry around mm. it's like carrying around a bucket of rocks on your back for the rest of your life mm -hmm. uh, if you if you and never setting them down never letting them go and and releasing them from you it's bound to have an effect on your life it's bound to make you weary it's bound to make you tired it's bound to make you sick it's bound to it's bound to cause all sorts of problems mm -hmm. and that's uh, and that's an operation of the law so it is correct to say that if we refuse to forgive now we have something to repent for mm -hmm. <laughs> ironically mm -hmm. because uh, the very action of refusing to forgive causes so much personal damage to ourselves that it's going to have uh, consequences for a long part of our life while we choose to to to, to not forgive. Mm. Mm. And further to that then, though the process of something entering me and then me just letting it, letting it pass through me or feeling everything I feel in response to that and letting it go, that's basically engaging forgiveness. And that could happen momentarily that it occurs. We spoke about that in our previous session. Mm. And in that way, then I'm still, then I'm acting in harmony with God's laws, basically. Yes. Now, and that's how forgiveness it's occurs. It's important to note that this is also a natural process. If yes. you look at a child, if a child is hurt and the child hasn't had any preconditioning as to how it should handle the hurt, 
it will go through a short and intense usually period of crying and, and feeling bad. And usually that is very short. It's less usually than an hour and it's usually less than 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. And the emotion is finished. Mm. And God designed it to be that fast. Yes. Right? The problem is that uh, we as parents don't usually allow the child to complete these processes. So now the child has learnt to store. Yeah. And once the child learns to store emotion, now it has the negative consequence of storing emotion. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And that and that's a, a negative part. That's going to be negative consequences for the rest of their life until they get to the point where they choose no longer to store that emotion. Yes. Mm. And basically, while the emotion is stored, then that emotion is affecting my desires, my feelings, my intentions, everything. my happiness. Everything. Beliefs even. Beliefs. Everything. The whole, my whole outlook, my whole experience of yeah. living. Yeah. And, but once forgiveness is engaged, once God's laws operate <clears throat> to motivate my personal process of forgiveness, I, and I do forgive, then I move from living in that hurt, don't I? And having that affect everything <laughs> to actually going to moving into a place where it's my sincere desires and my uninjured desires and emotions that are driving me. Yeah, it now lo lo uh, no longer has any effect on belief systems or future decisions or feelings or relationships or any, any part of your life. M most people don't understand it affects every little tiny part of your existence when you store uh, negative emotion. Mm. It really mm. does. And, and carries forward often, not only for your entire life, but because you now teach these particular emotions and feelings and thoughts and beliefs to your children, it often carries on for generation after generation. Mm -hmm. You know, and we see multiple generations now of people engaging the same kind of processes with other nationalities for as a result of these particularly multi-generational emotions being passed down from one to the other. Yeah. Very, very damaging, not only to your own life, but to the lives of every single person around you mm -hmm. and very damaging to the environment, actually. Yeah. The environment is severely affected by your choice to hang on to unhealed emotions. Mm. In fact, if you're a true environmental friendly person, <laughs> the very first thing you choose to do is to release emotions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. So true. Mm. Okay.